I don't like anything about you, mother, said my eldest son's wife. We want to live with our family alone, so get out. I was shocked to hear these words. It reminded me of when I had to leave my own parents' home. Now, I felt angry at the idea of being kicked out of this house too. Fine, I'll leave, I said, gathering my things to go. This was too much. I was determined never to forgive my eldest son's wife. It was time to put my plan into action. So, my name is Sandra Clark, and I'm 61 years old this year. I'm technically retired, but I'm still lucky enough to have some work. I don't go to the office every day anymore. Sometimes I drop by and attend meetings, but mostly I work from home. My oldest son seems to think I'm not working anymore, which isn't true. I became a widow when I was in my 40s. Right now, I live with my oldest son and his wife. Our family home has been in our family for a long time. It's a bit old and needs some fixing up, but I've always loved it. That's why leaving was hard. I've never had to worry much about money. My late husband's insurance money is still mostly untouched. I've been able to live comfortably without worrying about my future. Even though it might seem like I have an easy life, there are some things that bother me. It's mostly my oldest son's wife, Jessica. She's strong-willed and we often clash. This tension didn't just start recently. It goes back to when she first told us they were getting married. I still remember the outfit she wore when she first came to meet us. She showed up in a tracksuit that looked like something she wore back in high school. She said she wanted to be real with us, but I couldn't help but find it a bit odd. It's not exactly lying, but it felt like she was trying too hard to prove something. She's also very argumentative and smart, which can be challenging. I couldn't understand why my oldest son chose her as his partner. Later, I found out that Jessica was the one who pursued him. She's bold, I'll give her that, and she's attractive too. I think my son, who's a bit naive and sheltered, fell for her charm. Even after they decided to marry, things didn't change much. To put it nicely, she's straightforward. To be blunt, sometimes she lacks common sense in how she acts. I really wanted to object to their marriage, but I reminded myself that it's what my son wanted, so I kept my peace. And now, we're facing the consequences of that decision. After my son and Jessica got married, he insisted that we all live together in our family home. I thought Jessica might disagree, but she was actually okay with the idea. It didn't take long for me to understand why. However, once we started living together, Jessica never lifted a finger to help with household chores. She left everything for me to do, cleaning, laundry, cooking, despite being a full-time housewife herself. She had quit her job when they got married. Even though I work remotely and don't have to go to the office every day, I still have less free time than Jessica. While I'm working on my computer, Jessica would make comments belittling my work, saying, I'm just goofing off. At first, I brushed it off to avoid arguments, but it bothered me more and more as it kept happening. Jessica, since you have some free time, could you help out with the cleaning? I asked, noticing her lounging and watching TV. She looked at me with disgust, sighed dramatically, and replied, I don't do housework for your own good mother. Can't you see that? It's a shame you don't appreciate my consideration. She had this strange theory where she believed if she did the housework, it would be bad for my health. According to her, seniors need to stay active and doing chores would make me sedentary and possibly lead to dementia. So she was actually doing me a favor by letting me handle everything. Her reasoning was so bizarre it gave me a headache. Then she said something even more shocking. I agreed to live together to keep you from slacking off, mother. She said it with a half smile, leaving me speechless. I regretted agreeing to live together more and more every day. Doing all the housework while being watched by Jessica was nothing but torture. Fed up with the situation, I decided to talk to my eldest son, but it wasn't to complain about Jessica. I decided to move to an apartment where I could live alone. The current house we're in is old and has many stairs, which became difficult for me after I hurt my back last year. I talked to my son about the challenges of living here, and then I moved to an apartment. Even though it felt like Jessica pushed me out, I don't regret leaving. The new apartment is a rental. It might be a bit big for just me, but I got a room big enough for my grandchildren to stay in the future. I had the inside designed just the way I like it, and it felt like my own little castle. But my happiness didn't last long because Jessica started coming over every day and staying until late. The new apartment is really nice, huh? Maybe too big for you, mom? Jessica said, lounging on the couch. Why don't you come back to your old home and do the chores? It's for your health and longevity. It's unbelievable that Jessica is telling me to go back to the old house and do the chores. 
During the day, she's so self-centered, it's overwhelming. I've already moved out. You need to take responsibility as the wife. I handle all the chores here, and my health checkups are always fine, Jessica. You don't need to worry about me. But Jessica just turned away, ignoring my words. Ignoring anything inconvenient was her usual tactic. Yet, she kept coming to my apartment every day. Just recently, she said it's too much trouble to go back home and ended up spending the night. My parents' house and this apartment are only about a 15-minute walk apart. It was my eldest son who suggested I live closer to my parents' house because he was concerned. His concern made me a little sad to leave the old house. One day, after I had been out for work-related errands, I came back in the evening to a surprise. To my shock, Jessica had let herself into my apartment. It seemed she used the spare key I had given to my son without my knowledge. Ah, uh, welcome back, she said, lying on the floor in front of the TV without even bothering to get up. Jessica, that spare key is for emergencies only, not for you to come in whenever I'm not home. I felt uneasy knowing she had been in my apartment while I was away. It was the first time I firmly told her so. She seemed surprised, as I usually let things slide quickly. She gave me an annoyed look, but I stood my ground. You really are a difficult mother-in-law. I can't stand that about you. Jessica started yelling at me. I can't stand anything about you, not even this apartment. We're a family, so you should leave. With that, she tried to push me out the door. It seemed Jessica couldn't bear the idea of me living in the apartment. She was upset that they were still in the old house while I was here, calling it unfair. James is paying the rent for this place, right? It wouldn't be strange for us, his family, to live here. That's what it means to live beyond your means. Jessica seemed to think my son was covering the rent for the apartment. This explained why she kept showing up here. In her mind, the apartment should have been for her family to live in. Fine, I'll leave, I said firmly, staring her down. I agreed to move out within three days, which seemed to surprise her. Right in front of her, I called a moving company and arranged for them to come in two days. As Jessica left feeling satisfied, I watched her go, already planning my next move. True to my word, I moved out. My new place was an apartment specifically designed for seniors. I decided to test it out for two weeks. I handed over the keys and lease documents to Jessica, asking for a change in the contract through the real estate agent to the landlord. Luckily, I've known the landlord for a long time, so they were flexible and accommodating, which was a relief. My eldest son was furious with Jessica for kicking me out. He's even considering divorce, but Jessica doesn't seem to care. In fact, she started living alone in my apartment saying, well then, let's live separately. I'm amazed at how bold she is, but in five days, Jessica will find out the truth. While I was working from home, my phone started ringing incessantly. It was Jessica calling. I had been expecting this, so I had a recorder ready to record the conversation. I pressed the record button and answered the call. Excuse me, mother, what's the deal with the rent for this apartment? Why do I have to pay it? Jessica started ranting as soon as I picked up the phone. She sounded flustered. Well, Jessica, you're the current leaseholder, so it's only fair that you pay. Is there a problem? I purposely kept my tone calm and relaxed to annoy Jessica. She seemed even more agitated but didn't back down. But didn't James used to pay the rent here? We're not even divorced yet, so shouldn't James pay? Jessica had told my eldest son about the rent issue and he advised her to call me. The truth was, my son had never paid the rent. In fact, I had been financially supporting him. After retiring, I continued working as a consultant and advisor, earning a good salary. I was actually earning more than my son. I had been secretly helping him out because Jessica tended to spend a lot. It's just a misunderstanding, Jessica. Originally, I was the one paying the rent for that place. I never made James pay a dime. Jessica seemed shocked and caught off guard by the truth. She quickly said what she wanted to and hung up the phone. Right away, I contacted my eldest son and played him the recorded conversation. I've been putting up with it too, but I can't take it anymore. You feel the same way, don't you? I knew my son was exhausted from dealing with Jessica's debts. No matter how old he gets, as a parent, I can't help but want to help him out. Some might say I'm too soft, but I think it's just natural as a parent. My son replied quietly, I'll divorce her, I'm tired too. Then follow my lead, I told him my plan and gave him instructions. First, I asked him to take a few days of paid leave starting today. Then, I told him to quietly move out his important belongings without letting Jessica know. 
We didn't want her to notice any moving trucks, as she might be nearby. I had instructed him to slowly move his things out during the night, keeping it discreet. The important belongings were taken to a single family home that I had found as our new residence. This way, the plan progressed without Jessica knowing. Three days later, Jessica called again, sounding even more flustered than before. What? Why are you so worked up? Just like last time. I kept my tone deliberately relaxed as Jessica sounded overly anxious, almost in a state of panic. Mother, our house is up for sale. And I got a call from my parents saying that my belongings have arrived at their house. What does that mean? Jessica explained that her parents had received her belongings and our old house was now on the market. It seemed my eldest son had followed my instructions. He had sent Jessica's things to her parents' house and put our old house up for sale, leaving it empty. The landlord told me that if I can't pay the rent, I should leave. I? I thought I should consult with James, and when I got home, there were chains and a padlock on the gate, and I couldn't get in. There's even a for sale sign up. Jessica was almost hysterical. It must have been quite a shock for her to come home to. I've already entered into a sales contract with a realtor. We can't access that house anymore, Jessica, had began, ready to express all the pent-up frustration. Firstly, I'm no longer your mother-in-law, right? Yesterday, James should have filed for divorce. You signed it, didn't you? You and I are strangers now. Yesterday, my eldest son had filed for divorce at the city office. It turns out Jessica had signed the papers a while ago. Threatening divorce seemed to be a tactic she often used. My son used to believe that Jessica would change someday. After all, she was the person he loved enough to marry. He felt trapped into giving in to her threats of divorce, he once told me. But it seems my son has finally realized the truth. He signed the divorce papers, which had always been used as leverage, and submitted them. The divorce has been officially processed. You always used to tell James that you could divorce any time. Are you happy now that things have turned out your way, Jessica? I could sense Jessica holding her breath on the other end of the phone. She wanted to argue back, but seemed lost for words. She must have been feeling frustrated. Besides, I'm worried about you. After the divorce, how will you manage to live in that apartment without a job? Moving also costs money, and it's tough. How did you even afford it? Jessica's anger was no longer hidden. She yelled and cursed at me. She had claimed she married my son because of the inheritance he received from my late husband. However, I control all the inheritance, and she can't touch a penny of it. Despite marrying to clear debts, she screamed that nothing was going well for her. Of course, I made sure my son listened to this conversation too. If it came to a divorce settlement, I planned to use the recording as evidence. I thought it was the end, so I patiently waited for Jessica to finish her tantrum. She ranted for about 15 minutes without pause. Then, in the end, she started begging me for help, crying. She confessed that she had been disowned by her family. With nowhere else to go, she pleaded for my assistance. It suddenly clicked for me. Something had felt off at the wedding, and now I understood what it was. Jessica had no place to go, no home to return to. Despite feeling a bit sorry for her, I couldn't ignore the consequences of her actions. Apologizing now won't change anything. We're strangers now. There's nothing more to discuss. Good luck with your life from here on, I said before ending the call with Jessica. I felt a sense of relief afterward. It seems Jessica caused trouble at my eldest son's workplace. He told me things escalated to the point of involving the police when he returned home. Jessica, who had been staying at the apartment without paying rent, had her keys changed by the landlord while she was out. Now, she can't even get into her own apartment. She might have tried to contact me or my son, but we had cancelled our phones and got new ones with new numbers. I can only imagine the despair she felt when she realized she couldn't reach us no matter how many times she tried. We didn't give her our new address either, so she can't reach us that way. After causing a scene at my son's company, she was issued a restraining order. With no other options, it seems Jessica turned to her disowned family for help. However, when she returned home, she was met with a shocking sight. The luggage I had sent to her family's house was left out in the rain in the backyard, and she wasn't even allowed inside the house. It's likely that the unpaid rent for the apartment had been billed to her parents, adding to their anger. I heard rumors that she's currently staying in an apartment provided by an organization that supports homeless people. Without the ability to spend as she did before, she seemed stressed when I passed her on the street. I was stunned to see how much her hair had turned white and how dry her skin looked. She had changed so much. I hardly recognized Jessica at first. It made me realize just how much a change in living conditions can affect a person. 
I started a new life in the house I bought with my late husband's inheritance. It's a duplex, so my son can remarry whenever he wants. For now, he joins me for dinner, but otherwise, he takes care of his own things. I've found that this distance works well for us. The money from selling my parents' home is safe for future needs. I plan to use it for my son and his future wife when they marry. And of course, I'll keep some aside for any future grandchildren. I'm thinking of creating the English garden I've always dreamed of in my new home. On days when I'm not working, I spend time in the garden, caring for the young trees and herbs. This new life, filled with hope, has become my daily routine.